Welcome to the BXG Podcast, where pop culture and nerd culture meet at the nexus of the universe and are melded as seamlessly as waffles and cocaine. I'm one of your hosts, Brenton Bestwick, alongside my co-host, Frank Costanza's attorney, Greg Filson. Greg, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well, man. You know, I got my wine ready. I'm just chilling out. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing great. I'm ready to get ready to go. All right. So today we have a quartet of topics for our listeners delight, as well as the popular quick hitter segment. And I will say today we have more more quick hits than the Yankees had against the Indians tonight. Ouch. But after our first maiden voyage, we do have some housekeeping to take care of. BXG is currently available on the Podbean app, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, TuneIn, and Apple Music. Uh, as well as Spotify, so that's most of the um, the most of the places uh, where you can download a podcast or listen to a podcast. Um, we subscribe, got some, unsubscribe, subscribe, unsubscribe, subscribe. Yeah, rate, share, um, leave us kind of reviews. Five stars, five stars. Yeah. Um, you know, say nice things. Please share this. Uh, I do want to say that that we were very happy with the feedback overall that we got. From the first episode, other than the fact that I sounded a little bit weird, I sounded like I was doing a Batman impression the whole time. When I listened to it back, I, I kept expecting to hear myself ask where the trigger is. Um, <laughs> so I did go out and get get a microphone. Um, so hopefully that that helps us out. So how's everything out there in um, in Southern California where where the fires are not raging? Yeah, it's not raging. Uh, it's a beautiful day. It's going to warm up this week. Today, you know, it was 80, but it's going to be in the 90s. Hot-tober, as we like to call it out here. Um, no, it's good, man. Went for a swim today. Went for a nice 11-mile run. Feeling good. I'm ready to rock. How close are you to the ocean? I'm very close to the ocean. I could run to the ocean. I didn't do the run today of the ocean, but I could do a nice run to the ocean and back. 10 miles, about an hour. That's not yeah. bad. Uh, uh, Janie's parents, she they, they live right by the ocean, but yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So before we get into, um, you know, the topics that we kind of selected for the week, we actually do have some some uh, listener inquiries. So I'm just going to, um, right. before I do that, I am going to uh, announce to everyone that we have an email for listener inquiries uh we're going to try to typically record on tuesdays so get your questions in you know from tuesday to tuesday uh, and i'll be checking that the email there is going to be bxgpodcast at gmail.com so please be relevant polite topical with your inquiries and remember that if your mother taught you that you don't have anything nice to say don't say anything at all uh so the first one is is actually from melissa b she writes in and asks, Greg, you mentioned uh, being the presence of Jeremy Strong on last week's episode. What's the most exciting celebrity sighting you've experienced since living in L.A.? Um, you know, when I lived in L.A. for a little while, I live in Santa Barbara now, but, uh, you know, I didn't really see people in L.A. That was the funny thing. Um, but now that I moved to Santa Barbara, I see a, a lot more people. I'm not going to say everyone. Uh, the most exciting one for me personally, uh, anyone who knows me knows that I love Seinfeld, uh, I have seen Julia Louis Dreyfus in the, the place that I work at um, oh, several awesome. times. I once helped her. Oh, wow. I was very nervous um, because I didn't want to screw up. I wanted to know everything off the top of my head. I was able to do so, help her out, and checked her out of the of the store and everything. I was very sweaty afterwards. <laughs> it was a great it was a great moment for me. Uh, and yeah, I just it was really cool. She was super nice. Um, you know, she doesn't act at all like, you know, pretentious. She's just very cool, mild manner. She was really sweet with me. Uh, that's that's the most exciting and the best interaction that I've had with uh, a celebrity. For a second, I thought you were going to say Larry David, which would have been really hilarious and, I, and ironic since I used the Frank Costanza's attorney reference that, at the top. That's crazy. Uh, that would have, that would be amazing. Uh, I bet Larry David would be a, a cool a cool guy to meet, though. Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially if he's doing his Bernie Sanders impression. Sure, yeah. Um, okay, Brandon H. Uh, writes in and asks, in the last episode you said Microsoft had no issue covering a sale of $7.5 billion and that Sony doesn't have the ability to counterpunch. What is the largest sum Sony has ever paid for a studio? 
<clears throat> so I did a little bit of research on this and there's two that are two acquisitions that Sony have made in the last 12 months, or I'm sorry, a little bit longer than that, uh, that, that fall into the line of the two biggest purchases they've ever made. The first of those was Insomniac Studios, uh, which is obviously um, the developer behind the 2018 smash hit for the PlayStation 4 Spider-Man. They paid $229 million, um, which is nothing to sneeze at, but you know it's a far cry from the $7.5 billion that, that um, Microsoft paid for ZeniMax and all of its holdings. The other one that was a little bit more interesting is um, they paid just pretty recently $250 million for a stake in Epic. And if Epic sounds familiar, they don't necessarily do a lot of games, but they have one game that everybody seems to know about these days, and that's Fortnite. Um, everybody and their mom pretty much has seen, you know, stupid Fortnite dances. And, you know, when you have, like, <clears throat> the likes of Drake playing uh, with uh, premier streamers, it brings a lot of attention to that, to that game and that brand. So Sony owns about 3% of... Of Epic, um, so anytime that there's you know stuff sold on the Epic Game Store or skins sold in Fortnite, Sony's getting a, a, a quick rip of that. In contrast, uh, we covered the the 7.5 billion sale from uh, Zenimax and Bethesda to Microsoft. It's also worth noting that in 2014, Microsoft paid 2.5 billion dollars for Mojang, which is really only has ever only had one game, which is my, uh, Minecraft, and that's another one of those games that everybody. Um, kind of knows about Minecraft to some extent. It's the highest selling single game of all time um, across all consoles. So that's something that hopefully that clears that up why um, Sony's not going to be going out and, and spending billions of dollars on any studios as a counterpunch anytime soon. I just want to point out, I put no research into this. So Right. That's, yeah. Right. That's, that's probably a me question. <laughs> Um, <laughs> finally, Eddie, Eddie M writes in and asks, is eBay the best place to get a Nintendo 64? Um, I would say yes, uh, unless you have a decent, you know, um, like a pawn shop or, a, you know, like a, like a shop like that lying around your local neighborhood. Every now and again, some, something might crop up at a flea market um, or a yard sale, but you run the risk of, of never seeing the people that sold you that item again um so ebay is usually the best the best route that's where i bought my super nintendo um last year and i've gotten most of the games that i have um for my super nintendo collection over ebay so that's usually going to be the best place to go for for a purchase like that or a delorean if you have one of those lying around um maybe because you could drive that back sure in right. time yeah and, i mean if yeah. you've got your flux capacitor running Right, which I think you, most people do at this right. point. Yeah. Sure. All right, are you ready? Are you ready to get into the uh, the four main topics? Let's do this. Uh, let's yeah, do I'm it. excited. All right, number one, the uh, the time 100 most influential people of 2020 was announced via the publication this past week. The list was broken down into subsections of pioneers, artists, leaders, titans, and icons. A small sampling of the loose of the list um, that's relevant to this particular podcast includes Giannis. I'm not going to bother with his last name. Uh, Cupo. You got it, buddy. Um, he's in the pioneer section. Michael B. Jordan, uh, The Weeknd, Selena Gomez, and The Artist. Donald Donald Trump and Joe Biden uh, on under the leaders. Dr. Anthony Fauci is, was a leader. Pat Mahomes, which Greg covered in high school um, as a sports writer. Dwayne Wade and Tyler Perry as Titans. Was there anyone that you were surprised was left off of this list or anybody that you wanted to comment on? I did, I'll be honest. I'm going to be 100%. I didn't know a lot of these people. They're probably foreign leaders, doctors, things like that. That was my first response was there were a lot of people I didn't know, which is good because I like to learn about people. Um, I like to learn about what other people are doing beyond what I normally pay attention to. Uh, I thought that was good, and I have been. I've been reading. I try to read, you know, one or two every day. Um, it's not the fastest way about going going about things, but I was able to learn about people, and that was fun. Uh, someone I was actually kind of shocked, and this is just completely personal, is Lady Gaga. Uh, I, I feel like she's always been a pioneer every year um, since she's been around. I, but then again, I go, who do I replace? It's only a list of a hundred. I think she's one of, these, one of these people. She's so famous. You don't need to necessarily put her on a list like this as 
someone that's that's doing something. She's an influence. Everyone knows she's an influence. Uh, otherwise, I mean, I was stoked because I when we when you sent me this topic, I'm like, boy, I hope Selena Gomez is on this list. She's on this list. Pumped. And I was like, I hope Jonas is on this list. Here again, boom. Dwayne Wade. All these people kept showing up. That I'm like, I usually I look at lists and I'm ready to be fired up. I'm ready to be mad about who's on the list. I'm not mad. I'm shocked. One thing I'm not mad about. Holy cow, this was new for me. Uh, it was, I thought it was a great list. It covered so many topics, so many different people. I Time, I give you a very nice salute to this. This was a great list. I learned a lot. I'm excited to learn more. There's four names <clears throat> when I went back that I wrote down. And then I, I went back and looked, and two of them had been on. One of them had been on multiple times. Um. Two, to my knowledge, definitely one of them has, and, and I, I don't believe the other one has. So I'm going to go down my little list. Like you said, I don't know who you take out. <clears throat> uh, the first one of those was Elon Musk. Um, he was on the list in 2018 and I think 2010. And he's just, he, he, you know, they, they launched the, um, the Dragon Shuttle earlier this year um, amid the COVID crisis, obviously. And he's just been saying some off-the-wall stuff all year. And, you know, with Tesla and all the other things that he's got going on, I, I would have thought that, that was somebody that they would include on the list. Um, the next one I had was LeBron. Uh, he's been on the list four times. Mm. And but this year with everything that has gone on and, you know, how outspoken he's been about racial relations and and things like that as well as the fact that from a from a purely you know athletic basketball standpoint he's still at you know he's going to be 36 here in a few months he's just a few months younger than me he's still at the height of his basketball powers which is just incredible um you know led the league in in assists playing for the league's primetime team most popular team you know them and the celtics 1a 1b I, i was a little bit surprised um that they went with him over, or they did not go with him over over some of the other athletes um, or entertainers. Now the next two, one of them is probably going to be con- controversial, so I'll leave that one till the end. But but the other one that I was actually really surprised was Joe Rogan um, wasn't on that list. From a you know this is supposed to be the list of the most influential people, and you know Rogan signed a hundred million contract with Spotify which is now a host of the BXG podcast. Um, Back in March. uh, And he has the most popular podcast in the world. And there's no getting around that. You know, he he threw out there that he'd be willing to host a Biden-Trump debate. And it was taken seriously. And, you know, I think anybody who's ever listened to podcasts or or tried to start their own podcast, you know, is going to cite Joe Rogan as one of their influences. I certainly do. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to go see his, his stand up back in, um, back in October. Uh, and it was great. It was funny. Uh, we saw him over at the Wallstein center in Cleveland and, and we had a good time, but just considering that this list is supposed to be, you know, the hundred most influential people of the day, I was really surprised, really surprised that Joe Rogan was left off. What do you think about that particular, you know? Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. Uh, you know, it, it feels like a, a list where, I, I don't know where Joe Rogan lies. Um, you know, I, do you put him? I guess you probably put him in a pioneer. Uh, yeah, I mean, pioneer Titan doing, icon. Yeah, I mean, pioneer he's Titan. All of those it, he, it, that's what I, that's what I'm saying. So it's almost like he's almost bigger than the list, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, like he everybody knows who Joe Rogan is. Every like you said, if you care about podcasts, you know who he is, and everybody listens to podcasts now. It doesn't. You know whether you're listening to it just on your you know on your iPhone when you're going for a run, or if you're watching it, everybody knows who it is. And I almost feel like putting him on there, maybe the people at Time thought would have been lazy to go that route. I don't know. I'm just I'm just trying to figure out a reason why. Um, I agree with you. I didn't think of him immediately, even though I know everything you know all the stuff about him. I think maybe that's part of it, where it's just like, well, everybody knows Joe Rogan. Do we need another? another publicity 
you know, ring for him to, to fall into. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe. And when you when you factor in, you know, the MMA stuff, the UFC stuff that he does, I mean, he's just he's just one of those guys that he's kind of everywhere right now. Yeah, yeah. And I think that might have been it. It's just he's literally everywhere, and you can't you can't avoid Joe Rogan if you wanted to. All right, the last one I had, and I know that this is maybe going to ruffle some feathers or um, just be controversial in general, um, but I think that regardless of how you feel about the situation or what your politics is, and we've said we're going to keep politics out of this as much as possible, um, but considering this year, I, I don't think that you can have a conversation about who the most influential people of this year were without bringing up the name George Floyd. And I know that's going to draw some critics or, or, or what have you from our already burgeoning and, and infant audience that we have. But like I said, I'm not going to get into my politics or how I feel about the situation or, or you know left or right or anything like that. But I think if you look at people who influence the year, um, especially in the United States and really all around the world um, with, with everything that happened afterwards and is still happening, um, I definitely think that that is a name that, that – you know, at least deserve some consideration for a list like this. In Breonna Taylor as well. Um, I, I think that's one of those things where once you maybe go into that route, you can't do it because then you leave someone out. Yeah, sure. You, you don't want to leave anyone out, out of those lists. I think since we all know that, and you know, like I said, you, like you said, we're not we're not going to go into politics. Those names don't matter because of politics. Those names matter because they're not here now. And that's that's definitely the issue. And I think you just don't want to leave anyone off a list that had something happen to them this year that shouldn't have happened. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. That was a, to end that topic on a bit of a dire note. Um, but number two, in last week's episode, Greg made reference that we would unlikely see Disney Plus streaming series starring the biggest stars of the MCU. However, in one case, that appears to not be the case. Variety reports that Samuel L. M. Effing Jackson will reprise his role as super spy Nicholas J. Fury in an upcoming Disney Disney Plus series. While it may be up for debate if Nick Fury is not one of the primetime stars of the MCU, there is no denying that locking down Sam Jackson for a series on a small screen is a big get for Disney and for Marvel. Are you excited for uh, whatever they plan on calling this, whether they just call it Fury or, or whatever? Uh, I think they're going to call it Fury on a plane. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Uh, you know, I, I love Samuel Jack. Who couldn't? You and I saw snakes on a plane together as a joke. Was it a Everyone joke? was in on it. Well, not as a joke in the moment. I don't know what that was. Honestly, it was an acid trip without the acid. Uh, I, I guess I'm excited. I don't. I really don't know. I mean, Samuel Jackson is a huge star. If he's on the TV, I honestly think if we gave him ten bucks, he might show up on here. <laughs> I don't know. You know, what? He, the guy just loves being around, and I don't blame him. I don't blame him, and he's a cool dude. I'm not gonna be disappointed to see Samuel L. Jackson in these things. Uh, it's just, I, I have no idea. I'm. I, I would say my expectations are in the middle of what to expect from this, whether he just kind of pops up on something else. I don't know. Uh, the character is always to me, like not a character that I've put a lot of thought in. It's important, but it's not, you know, he's never been my favorite part of any movie. Yeah. I think, and, and like, if you go back in time to the comics and really look at the character of Nick Fury, it started out looking more like a guy like me. Um, he was just kind of like uh, gray and white and fat and over and overweight and over the hill. Uh, and then when they rebooted the um, when they rebooted things with the Ultimate Universes, where they they um, kind of retooled him to look like the Sam Jackson version. And that's one of those instances where I was thinking back, like, did they know this was going to happen? And they just drew him to look exactly like Samuel L. Jackson. Because it looks exactly like Samuel L. Jackson, and those things came out it's weird. in the early in the early aughts before, you know, the MCU was a thing. <clears throat> um, personally, and I, and I'm kind of excited for this in the same sense that I'm excited for Wandavision because I think it's going to be doing 
it's going to do something a little bit different. Um, I think that my hope is that this winds up being very much like Captain America and the Winter Soldier, which as much as a superhero movie as it was, it was also a spy movie. Um, and and it's the it's the best to me, by the way. Well, it's my and favorite I was just going to say studio. that yeah. you know, Civil War is kind of cheating because it's like Avengers light. Um, but right. Winter Soldier, there's just it's just a little bit different. Um, it hits a little bit differently uh, than especially a lot of the round two movies for the other opening characters. Thor: Dark World is terrible. I don't want to say it's terrible, but it's it's definitely one of the weaker movies in the MCU. Uh, Iron Man 2, kind of take or leave it. I love um, Mickey Rourke and his bird. Um, Who doesn't? And but but Winter Soldier, I think, is the class of that sort of round two of of phase two, if you want to call it that. Um, and Sam Jackson had a big part in that movie, so I am excited about that. I do think you know I'm curious to see is this going to be a retread? Is this going to be you know somewhere between uh, Captain Marvel and him showing up? Um, in uh, Iron Man 2 or, or whenever he initially pops up? Um, or is it going to be something that's a continuation of everything that happened um, since, you know, the snap or or, or even since um, Spider-Man Far From Home, which will be different because a lot of people, not to spoil the movie, but there's some, there's some stuff going on with Sam in that movie. So we'll see. Um, I am pretty excited about it. I do think it's going to be something different. I don't think it's going to be your standard superhero affair. I think it is going to be more of like a like a spy versus spy type thing, but I, I think it's got the potential to be pretty cool. I hope that's the case. Uh, I just don't know. I mean, I, I trust Marvel, though. I, you know, like we said, one, I'm going to watch it. I don't care. I will watch it. Marvel puts it out there. I will consume it. That's And they, they do that, too. I hope they don't get lazy with that idea. Uh, and that's always a concern for me, is anytime somebody just keeps being able to do something that they know will be successful, uh, don't get lazy. You know, if you're going to do this, go all in. And I think Marvel will. Yeah, I think so too. Um, they don't, as of now, appear to be messing around with these shows. And it's been said that um, that these shows are going to play a role uh, in in the uh, the MCU, the big films too. So, you know, I don't think that they're going to take things lightly. Lightly, I think they're going to take things pretty seriously as far as these shows go. Uh, okay, number three. According to IGN, the hit series The Boys from Amazon, which we discussed last week, is already getting a spinoff, which will be set at a superhero college. Spinoffs, while pre- prevalent in the past um, with different sitcoms and things of that nature, are in vogue more than ever with Game of Thrones spinoffs set to launch um, and other spinoffs already airing to varying degrees of success, such as Better Call Saul, a, break- a Breaking Bad spinoff, a Mayans MC, a spinoff of the wildly popular Sons of Anarchy, which was a loose spinoff in itself, or at least a shared shared universe with um, the Shield. How much more spinning do you think we can take? I'm not a fan of spinning. I'm not a fan of spinoffs. I like I like fresh content as much as I can. Uh, you know, not to go way too far back, but remember Joey, Friends spinoff. Uh, yeah, rough, rough. I don't want to go that direction. I I feel like what they're doing now that that seems smarter. Um, I just, I'm just more of a fan of, of fresh new content. If you leave, you know, Julia Louis Dreyfus left Seinfeld and she did shows that were not a lane and she was successful and, and that's awesome. I love that. And other characters from that show also did shows that weren't spinoffs, not successful, but if you get the right people involved, you can still be relevant and have a completely different character and be successful i'm more of a fan of that than retreading things Uh, as much as i like any show you know i i just don't want i don't want more of something i already enjoyed because there's always that fear that it's not going to be as good as the original so two uh one thing i looked up um spinoffs and and these things date back to the 50s um with some of the different things i'm not shocked a lot of it's going to be like you know your reality stuff obviously the real world which i believe they should bring back started as the real world and then it turned into you know real world las vegas new orleans paris whatever uh and that kind of spun off road rules which then they kind of spun off the challenge um which we're definitely going to be doing some stuff on um i hope so it. um get johnny bananas on here if we I can would love to. um 
so I talked about a few. I wrote down a few other ones um, when I was doing doing a little bit of research. CSI is obviously a big one. There's you know there's a CSI in pretty much every every city in America at this point. I'm I'm waiting for the debut of CSI Pittsburgh, where they go downtown. Um, I have one CSI Santa Barbara where they just have five cops show up to everything. <laughs> Cause there's nothing better to do. Uh, Law and order. Also another big one. Uh, there's like a million of those, the game of Thrones things we talked dun, about dun, dun. walking dead. Um, I, I can't believe I missed that one. I'm not a big walking dead guy, but, but the walking dead and then fear the walking dead. Now here's my question for you. Is curb a spinoff? I don't think so. Even though they had the it's, season that was the, the reunion. I, what it is, is it's, content that we still needed from larry because he quit the show it, we we wanted more larry he wanted to give us larry he wanted to give us this like crazy version of larry that exists maybe in his head but isn't real uh it's very much like seinfeld i, I won't disagree with that but i never considered it because he wasn't on the show as a main character no matter what you think about george or whatever and yes he appeared i he was frankenstein's yeah. you know like you said frankenstein's lore uh i just watched that episode i recently. just that's why that popped it's, up and Frank oh, yeah, a tiny. it's great it's a, <laughs> yeah and he's he's george steinbrenner but i feel like we still get, I know if I know, get so much we get so much swearing in yeah. curb we get it's so different than seinfeld seinfeld kind of had this you know, is also very in the moment curb. Like when you watch, uh, we, we're watching Seinfeld. We're watching Seinfeld. It's very in the moment. It's still funny, but the clothes, everything is so much in the nineties. I think it's more curb. Kind of, I, I will say, curb kind of just plays wherever. I'll say Seinfeld. I think is, and it, and it obviously it gets a lot of comparison to the uh, Friends, and then Frasier, as you mentioned, Frasier was beating it for for best comedy Emmy. Um, I think. Seinfeld is more timeless than those um, because I think the humor, you know, some of the humor in Friends was very physical in terms of, oh, look how funny it is. Chandler's typing on his computer that's the size of like a kitchen oven at this point, you know, whereas the, the humor in Seinfeld is derived from the fact that these are all terrible people. And that kind of plays regardless, no matter um no matter what the setting is. And yes, you know, the, the Jerry with the denim button up shirts tucked in and even the puffy shirt episode, those aren't going to be as maybe as relevant today, but <clears throat> um, I just think, and obviously I'm a big Seinfeld fan, but I think Seinfeld plays better and is more timeless than some of those other shows. I totally agree. Uh, I, you know, we watched the soup Nazi episode the other day. I've watched that episode. Honestly, I've probably watched a hundred times. I laugh just as much now as I did the first time. I probably laugh more because you're ready for the jokes and they, they hit you and you're like, I'm probably not going to laugh and I still laugh. And, you know, there's just something about that. And Jerry Seinfeld has a new book coming out too. And I, you know, I'm reading it right now. It's really just his stand-up. And whatever you think of his stand-up, like the way he progressed through his years, he's, he knows how to do it. And to do it the way he does it and the way people have copied him, the biggest compliment is to be copied. And, I always feel like John Mulaney is the new Jerry That's so Seinfeld. funny. I was, um, I was listening to a, a different podcast and they were talking about how um, Mulaney is so like Seinfeld-esque. So it's funny. It's ironic that you bring that up. Because I don't, I don't enjoy people cussing. I don't enjoy, I don't enjoy dirtiness to my comedy. I like, I mean, I'm a, I'm someone that just loves puns. I love the lowest form. I like the highest form of comedy. And Seinfeld just always plays for me. And no one tried to spin anything. Michael Richards tried to do like something in that era. It didn't play. But you know, I just I think going back going back to that topic of spinning things off. If you can do it in the right way, then yeah, I, I agree. But Joni loves Chachi doesn't play for me. And I don't I don't need I don't need more. I need I like fresh, good content. That's what I personally like. There's a lot out there, and I, I think people should, you know, consume that more. Are you a Gaffigan guy? I am. Yeah, I'm a yeah big fan of, of Jim course. Gaffigan. Yeah, you are Jim Gaffigan. Calm down. I'm not that pale. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Listen, I mean, he's funny, but he's so pale you can see through him. 
Um, okay, number four uh, in gaming news, <clears throat> mega corporation Amazon, owner of the Twitch streaming platform, has announced Amazon Luna. Uh, its attempt to hop into the cloud-based streaming gaming battle. A Luna Plus subscription will cost six bucks a month, five ninety-nine, and a controller designed for the service will be available for forty-nine ninety-nine. Although you will be able to use your PS4, DualShock 4, or Xbox One controllers to play. Early adopters will be treated to Resident Evil 7, Ukulele, Control, among others, with Ubisoft as an earlier supporter to the platform, bringing the next entry of the long-running Assassin's Creed series Valhalla to Luna at a date to be determined later. Luna will be available through most devices capable of streaming content, and while no date for Luna has been set, those interested can request early access. So I have a question for you on this topic. If I say the words the words Google Stadia, what does that mean to you? It means Google and Stadia, and I got nothing. Okay, I got nothing so this is relevant. Do, Google <laughs> Google on November nineteenth of last year released a cloud based um, system, uh, and uh, I I took a few notes. They called it the future of gaming. Um, there's a couple big games, Ubisoft, Ubisoft is on everything, um, from the jump, they're on, they're on PlayStation, they're on Xbox, they're on Nintendo, they're on PC, they're on Stadia, they're going to be on Luna, um, Cyberpunk 77, which, which is slated to release this year is, is supposed to come to Stadia. Um, the issue with this is that you pay a price for a system, you pay $130 for Google Stadia, which it doesn't seem like you have to buy a system with Luna, but you buy a, a, a console for $130, then you pay a $10 subscription fee, and then on top of that, you're still having to purchase these games. And the kicker here is there's no option to download these things. And so we talked about how, um, you know, you and I have pretty good internet connection living on the East and, and West Coast, respectively, in last week's episode when dealing with, you know, the digital version of the PlayStation and the digital version of the, the new Xbox consoles. If you're having to stream these games that are supposed to be playing 4K 60 frames per second, it's not going to happen. You're you're not going to be able to stream those games. This isn't like streaming Tetris or Minesweeper. Um, you know, Destiny is a game that runs pretty intensely. Control had issues um, this this past year or last year running on PS Pro, PS4 Pro and the Xbox whatever their um, you know, up console for the mid-generation is, and it was making the PlayStation 4 Pro sound like an airplane to take off. So to ask these things to, to stream without downloading is a problem. And to that end, the last time Stadia released sales figures by March, which would be November, December, January, February, March, about five, six months, they had only sold 107 units, 107,000 units, sorry. Um, in contrast, on in 2013 um the ps4 sold a million units at launch in just north america so this thing isn't selling and the, the issue is that while i do think that streaming games is the future of gaming and i think that eventually these these consoles are just going to be melted into the tvs that we buy um and you're just going to stream or download your games straight to the tvs things aren't good enough yet for that to be a thing the internet's not good enough you know nationwide for that to be um a viable option xbox has uh x cloud gaming playstation has ps now if you talk to users of both of those they'll tell you that the latency is terrible and it makes these things almost impossible to play um and they want downloads they want to be able to download things so while I do think that that it is kind of smart for Google and Amazon to try to jump into this space a little bit and, and compete, uh, I just think that they're kind of ahead of the curve a little bit. It feels like they're too ahead. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, you know, it, it doesn't seem viable. It doesn't seem viable for them to do it. I understand why you would do something like that. Like you, know, like you said, for for us, it, would, it wouldn't matter. I could definitely have this be up and rolling. I probably wouldn't even think twice about it. I probably could, I mean, I have insane internet here. I could probably do this, go, have no issues, 
before, but I, you know, I lived in Juneau, Alaska, you know, a year and a half ago. I could, there's no way I could have done it. That internet, even though I had the best we could have there, was inconsistent. It would have been a disaster. And, you know, Juneau is the capital of Alaska, and it still had terrible I was trying internet. to show so, Juneau at work today where Juneau was, and I literally couldn't find it on the map. Southeast Alaska. That's what I looked at. I think it was, it, yeah. was a world, it was a yeah. world map rather than yeah, a country map. Tough. So I just think they were like, nah, Juneau's yeah. not a thing. No, yeah, so, yeah, and it, it is, barely isn't, 30,000 Yeah, it's like the population um, like that's, that's Right, yeah, so. Maybe less. It's one of those things where, you know, you go outside of, you could you could go to spots in California where that's going to suck. Mm-hmm. You know, there's just, you're not going to be able to do that. I I think it's cool. I, I, I like the idea of it. It just feels like it's more of a 2030 idea than it is a 2020 idea. Yeah, and I don't know, I mean, the way things that advance now, um, Maybe even 2025, but I just don't think the infrastructure is there to support this. And, you know, like I said, well, I just assume I just assume everything's going to crap for a couple more years and then we'll pick it back up. But that's just that's just. Yeah, I mean, that's possible. I, and, and if you're one of the hundred and hundred and seven thousand people that own a stadia, you know, let us you know, Use the email. Let us know what you think. Are you enjoying your stadium? That'd be awesome. Yeah, let us know. I definitely, you know, I I would be super intrigued. Not even being that interested in this in my own world, I would love to know what people have experienced, especially if you're not in a major city. Mm-hmm. I would love to know how your experience is with it. Yeah, I mean, I use um, one of the one of the um, features of the PlayStation that I use from time to time is is you can connect to like a laptop or an iPad or things like that to just stream um, remotely from your system to your to your laptop your iPad or whatever and and that's something I use sometimes and even that even though I'm on the same Wi-Fi isn't great um, and that's not processing the information and allowing you to play it in the moment that's just projecting it from one thing to the other so I just don't think that this is viable option at this time like we said all right we've got uh, a whole slate of of quick hitting topics some of these probably we'll we'll talk about as much as some of the big topics um i know this is one that that you're excited about and i i gave my wife some insider information that this was going to be something that was talked about on this episode she got very excited about it Justin yeah, Timberlake posted yeah. an instagram video of himself in Timberland with with the caption back together again what's your level of excitement Future Greg love sounds, my man. Future Greg love sounds. Um, you know, when when I saw that, I was excited. Uh, Future Sex love sounds is in the top five albums of the last 20 years, in my opinion. Um, and probably, you know, it, I feel like it's an underrated album. It seems like it, people kind of forgot it exists. That album changed pop music. Uh, he made videos that were like, that were movies he did a lot of stuff i saw that in concert it was incredible um uh, you know justin timberlake can still bang out hits what did uh, he you doesn't think care of, um, as much about man in the woods i actually enjoyed okay. it you know it wasn't it wasn't it's not my favorite justin timberlake album but i'm glad he went somewhere different i it, it's just you know i like when artists try something see, different because they just want to see how it plays that's fine with me. You know, it's it's not my favorite, but it's it was still something I listened to. I didn't mind. I didn't See, mind. See, the thing about that, and you would maybe be able to shed a little bit more light on this than than I will be able to. And you know, people who know me, and and as you know, people who don't know me get to know me through this podcast. I'm not a big pop music guy. Um, you know, I stay in kind of the hip hop and then the alternative rock realms. Um, but I will say, and I don't know if Timbaland had anything to do with it, but to me, the 2020 um, experience was a far superior, his, his best album. Um, I think, like you're saying about... Agreed. It is the best yeah, album. It is the best like album. Like you're saying about the man in the woods and him willing to take chances. I mean, he's writing songs that are like nine minutes long on, on 2020 with all brass accompaniments, things like that. And I tell people, people will ask me, what are the, you know... I don't go to as many concerts as I used to, but what are what are the concerts that stand out in your mind? And I, the three that do are, um, you know, the Foo Fighters when I saw them, um, and I was able to get right up on their stage for their acoustic part. Um, the Chili Peppers when I saw them in Cleveland with you, uh, and they did the whole Hall- they did the whole Halloween thing where um, 
uh, Chad Smith dresses Ricky Bobby, and he was completely unmistakable from Will Ferrell. Yeah. No dongs, right? By the and way, and the but the number one album or the number one concert that I've ever been to, and I think it's a large part due to how cool the sound was live uh, with the all brass band and and everything was when I saw um, Timberlake and Jay Z perform at the Hershey State Park, the, the football stadium. That was one of the most incredible music experience. Probably, like you said, my favorite concert I've ever been to. I'm not a big pop guy. And for him to kind of reel me in at that concert, I mean, I was there to see Jay-Z. That's what I was there for. Uh, but I ended up leaving and really appreciating the music that he had put out on that album because I thought it was very thoughtful, very different, things like that. I remember when Future Sex Loves, Love Sounds came out and he's like, oh, this is a rock album. So this isn't a rock album. This is a pop al- this is a pop album with rock elements in it. But the 2020 was so different. It was jazz. It was hip hop. It was everything. And, and that was, you know, that has me, like I said, I don't know if Tim Blinn had anything to do with that. I know he's, he's a um, producer that gets the most out of a lot of artists. Um, but if he can bring that, that sound back to, to JT, then that's something that I'm looking forward to for sure. I'll just add to, can I say that 2020 is his best, but Future Sex Love Sounds is more important, and that's why I put it in the the top five, because I think people kind of were expecting him not to have an album like that. And 2020 is just such a different experience, and it isn't for everyone. I love it. Obviously, you love it. I I can understand where people... agree that it's more for everybody than than the other ones are because a lot of the other ones a lot of his other justified and and future sex love sounds are almost like by the numbers pop albums and i think maybe by going in a different a different direction it brings other people in i i think the the only issue i have with 2020 even though i i it's very long yeah it is really long and and that, that can be a problem. Um, I mean, I I am a fan of a tight album, so Lincoln, and Future Lincoln Park Sounds Cyber is Theory a tighter. Thing? Thirty-seven minutes album of the year. I, I, wow, you hit me hard there. Um, wow, uh, dang that that I got punched in the gut right there. Jeez, no, not that. I mean, that amount of minutes, fine. Not that music. Um, I'll, even though I, you know, I probably sang along to that <laughs> stuff back in the day who didn't um i i, I did think that might be the future sex love sounds you can go for a run you can listen to that 2020 you're in a marathon you might finish the marathon before it ends and that's where things go awry but back to him creating this album i'm excited i you know if somebody else give me news that rihanna's gonna come out with another album i would probably be more excited just because, not because I think Justin Timberlake's out of his element or anything anymore. It's just, I I feel like she still has a, a 2020 in her. You know, Anti was really, really good. And I feel like there's still something left for her. I don't know what direction Justin Timberlake's going to go other than just giving us something that's maybe just more of that, which is still awesome, but just more it's of that. It's not on here. And, and this is obviously, it's happened a while ago, but I don't think we've talked about it. What do you think of Shawnee hiring, getting hired back by the Chili Peppers? Uh, totally in. Yeah. He's the secret sauce. Yeah. I mean, as good as Flea and, and everybody else totally. seems to be the secret sauce. Yeah. Um, happy birthday, Mark Hamill, the actor behind the two iconic roles, Luke Skywalker and the animated version of the Joker turned 69 last week. Hey, yo. Um, and he's, we talked about, he's, he's, he's doing those hilarious commercials with um, Patrick Stewart uh, for, what is that, Uber Eats or, or DoorDash or something? Yeah, Uber Eats. It's terrific. And, um, Uber Eats, sponsor us if you or want. Or DoorDash, because we have DoorDash here. Either one. We have DoorDash and Grove City. I, I have everything no, here. I'll, I'll take I'll take whatever I can get. Right. Yeah. I can't even believe we have DoorDash. Um, speaking of commercials, this is another one. I don't have it on here, but I just want your take on it. Is that How funny are those Bill Belichick commercials for Subway? I just sitting there eating a sub yeah, and smiling. It's magic. It just, yes. And smiling. I, you get two things. You see him eat and smile, and you're like, "What is this?" Yeah. I just assume that I assume the man just ate cookies. <laughs> I'll be one hundred percent honest with you. I assume that he just twisted apart Oreos all day, <laughs> licked the cream, set it all aside, and at the end of the day, he just ate the cookie part. 
I don't know about that. That's what I thought I did. I just was like, yeah, I don't know. I think they're, I, it's great. Every time, it's the same, I see the same commercial a thousand times, I'm like, this is great content. This is what and I Just do. him smiling is just, it's 10 out of 10. Um, yeah. Chadwick Boseman tribute mural has been um, painted down at downtown Disney in Orlando. Have you seen it? I have. Uh, what do you think? I mean, anything you can give to him, uh, I'll take it. You know, um, just, uh, if I talk too much, it's going to get weird. Uh, I'm going to get, he was an, his awesome, I can't believe I'm saying was. Mm. Uh, it's, just, it's great. I, I, whatever you can give him uh, is uh, terrific and probably not enough. Uh, you know, he's... He's a legend that we didn't deserve, and we were fortunate enough to have him for as many years as we did. His PR, we were, I was talking to somebody at work about this. His PR team must have been just phenomenal that they kept all this under mm-hmm. wraps. And the fact that he was jacked for Black Panther and both both Avengers movies. Um, it is a shame, though. I, I think that you know he's one of those guys that we were just starting to see the best of. Uh, what do you think yeah. they do with Black yeah. Panther? I've seen... Two theories. Uh, I'm pr- I'm partial to one of them. <clears throat> what do you think they're going to do? What, what are you partial towards? Well, the t- the two things that I've seen is uh, number one, I, I don't think they should recast him. I think that he should die off camera. And I've that that's the theory that I've I've seen kind of put out there on the internet is that they would kill him off camera and and have um, his sister take up the mantle. I wouldn't want to see him yes. be recast. I think that's a bad move. But if they did, I'd like it to go to John Boyega, especially since they did him dirty in Star Wars. Wow. Uh, I would be okay with either of those options. Uh, wow. If his sister took over, you're. I think the, the move to Let me back up. I think that they just shouldn't do another okay. one. That's what I think they should do. agree. And, oh, okay. If if you're yeah yeah, it, I 100 percent agree. I you know I hate to take Black Panther out of the yeah, universe. That's what I mean. Is I don't um, think they should do another one, but it made 1.2 billion dollars or something like that. They're not going to not make right. another one. They're exactly, and you're you're going to have good people still involved in that movie. Great people still involved in that movie, and I'll you know, it's probably still going to be a good movie. It's not going to be the same. It's yeah, Letitia, Letitia It's going to be weird. That's, yeah, it's, that's the actress's name. This is yeah, Letitia Wright. Yeah, mm-hmm. Letitia Wright. Um, she's going to be awesome. If if they go that direction, you know, I, that's going to be terrific. I I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that that will be a great route to go. John Boyega going that route too. I like that. Uh, but I haven't seen that. You're just that's just my personal feeling. I, wow, I would. I like yeah. it. I, you know, I, I can't, I can't pick, I'm thinking in my head, it was like going through people, I, that would be incredible if they did that, you know, but I like keeping it in the family, uh, you know, I feel like that's what, I think it's where Marvel Studios would like to go, just so you're, you have a recognizable character for this. Yeah, they scene. don't recast a ton, um, the only two major ones that I can think of, and maybe there's some smaller ones, is obviously, um, uh, Mark Ruffalo stepping in for Edward Norton as as Hulk, and then um, uh, Don Cheadle taking over Rhodey um, from uh, Terrence Howard. I can't think of any big ones. Those are two pretty big ones, um, but not neither of those would compare to to Black Panther. Um, Henry Cavill wants to play Bond. You're a Bond guy. What do you think? You're more of a Bond guy than I am, definitely. Yeah. Um... It's tough. I, I you know, I, he has all the looks. He's, to, of, to quote of, uh, Mugatu, Bond. he's so hot right now. Yeah, he is very hot right now. I didn't think about it a lot um, when when I saw this. I was just like, wow, I I did not expect Henry Cavill to be in it. That would be cool. I wish he was a little older. Uh, I like my Bonds. I like my Bonds a little a little aged. Like I, I like my wines and I, I like my cheese. Uh, he's so young. It'd be kind of, it'd be cool, I guess. Like you go a different direction. You could have twenty years of him. That would be fun. I'm not. I, I'm not against that. I. I like when I see him. He's a buff dude. That's gonna be cool. He's gonna. You know. I think it. I think it makes sense if you want to go that direction. I've been in favor of doing the the lady bond thing though. I. 
I like spies. Uh, I like anything like that. But if Henry can't, if he wants to do it, I like people that are interested in wanting to do things because that means you're going to give it your all when you reluctantly or you back into a role. I'm, I'm concerned. He's saying he wants to do it. That makes me more excited about that he character. Really, so. Daniel Craig's the best Bond, though. I'm just going to say that right now, and I don't think you're going to beat Daniel Craig. So, so with Henry Cavill, he spoke the Witcher thing into existence. Um, I mean, they were going right. to do it regardless, but he spoke him starring into it into existence. And I have not watched more than the first 15 minutes of it, and then I swore up and down that I would get back to it, and I never have. But everybody that I've talked to loves it. Um, they love him in it. He's in the uh, that Enola Holmes with uh, Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, like like uh, Will Ferrell and Zoolander and Magatu, he's he's so hot right now. But um, you said the Lady Bond. Let me throw a name out there for you, Idris Elba. That would be it, that would be great too if he's interested. And I think I'm, he said he. I've has never heard interest in it. I think he. I, I, I think I've heard like he ha- he is interested. I've heard he isn't interested, which always makes me concerned. He loves DJing right, right. now. He did that weird just, Netflix loved, new, or uh, series of him. What is yeah, it? Turn, yeah. Turn so up he's Charlie kind of just, like that? Yeah, exactly. So it's like if he – that's the thing about being James Bond, which Daniel Cray, like he – you know, the last movie, he, this upcoming one, he wasn't super about, I guess, initially. Okay. Five. So – and they're all good. I'll be I mean, honest, the only one I've seen... Quantum Sky of Soul. It's the best one. But Quantum of Souls is the weirdest one. I've watched it a billion times. It's so gnarly. You're like, what is happening? I digress. It doesn't really matter about that. But he's he is the best of me, even though, you know, there's... Bond is a character that's tough to make bad because it's like... he The idea is he's wearing suits, he's kicking ass, and he's getting ladies. That's hey, it's that's cool. the sexiest that's, man of the, that's, of, of the world or whatever. The exactly, sexiest yeah. man on the planet. Um, yeah, and I, I that would be awesome. But I want you know, as long as he actually wants to do it and doesn't want to have things off on the side, because it's it's a thing where you don't want to have just a bond for one movie. You want to have a bond for four or five, six movies. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think what Daniel Craig else has done in this run. Um, he's had some smaller roles. He did was Munich during this. I know he wasn't the lead in that. That was, um, I think family. so. There was the the movie with uh, Harrison Ford where they were fighting aliens, Ooh, and Cowboys, Cowboys and aliens. And aliens. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that movie is terrible. But man, what that, a rush! Uh, there was that uh, one of them, like the Resistance or something. I, yeah, I vaguely remember. yeah. But he's for the most part stuck bond. to being Bond. It's kind of like it's which is like, cool. Uh, I would love to be Bond. What else has Robert Downey Jr. done in the last ten years other than be Iron Man? Uh, he made the two Sherlock Holmes movies. One of them might actually come out before Iron Man, but uh, the original Iron Man. I but think, yeah, but other than that, yeah, RDJ has a Doctor Doolittle, and that was that bombed. Um, so I don't know. Uh, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy would be. <clears throat> I think if you're going to go straight. Into if you're going from Daniel Craig to the next one, I think Tom Hardy is the transition because it still is that rough-edged guy. You you know you don't have to care if he says a lot, and Tom Hardy's great at not saying not stuff. Max. He exactly it, he's great at looks good in a suit, looks good in a suit. He's sharp. You know he's gonna he's definitely gonna be great at beating up people, and that's what I love. That that's Breaking what I love. Batman's back. Uh, Exactly. All he did that. Aside. He did that. I am a Yeah. Um, I, I would love to see. I would love. The, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I've suggested Robert Pattinson to people. Is he English? But he's going to be Batman. Okay. Yeah. Because you have to be English to be yeah. Bond, right? That's like a rule. You have to be English. Yeah. 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 Um, and, but, you know, it's one of those things where he's Batman now. What did you think of so the, I'm out. the Batman trailer when it came out? I uh, it it made me excited. It's like it got me. Batman. It gave me. It um, made me think of Watchmen vibes. Not the HBO series. It gave me the the Snyder movie. Right, the yeah, original. The yeah. Um. It gave me. It gave me eighties Batman comics. If you've ever gone back and gone where it's a little weird, and you're like, I'm I'm okay with this. Like I I like because we keep doing Batman. We keep doing Batman, and you and I both think the Christian Bat uh, Christian Bale Batman's are the best Batman's. But it's nice to see a different take on it. It's it seems like it's gonna be it's gonna be dark, almost like Gotham, 
and we've evolved Gotham series from Fox into this, where it's dark, it's emo. Gonna be a little, I think the Riddler is the main character too. Um, mm-hmm. So, and Riddler, the Riddler to me is always one of the more dark. Yeah. yeah. And Riddler's to me is always one of those really dark characters. Jim Carrey made it a little yeah, weird, it different. Be. It can be kind I mean, of goofy though, too. So, like, like yeah, you said, but can yeah, play. right. So, uh, you know, I just, I just every character that I love, whether it's Batman or James Bond, I want people to be all in. Obviously, Christian Bale was all in because Christian Bale is always all in. There is no, there is no ninety nine percent of Christian Bale in a movie. You get a hundred percent. That's what I want with my James Bond characters. Uh, that's you know that's why I didn't like the Pierce Brosnan one because any of those I just didn't think he was one hundred percent. Goldeneye is a great Nintendo game though. It is a great Nintendo game. I won't disagree with yeah. you there. Great. Although Nintendo go play game. it now. It doesn't. I, it doesn't the movies. Hold up. Well, I'm sure it can. That controllers. Yeah. All right. Uh, script disagreements <laughs> led to the exit of Spielberg, <clears throat> as well as the head writer on Indiana Jones Five. You say what you need to say, and then I'll say what I need to say about this. I don't, you don't care. care. Okay. Well, do we do, do we need me, another let, one? Here's my thing. Okay. I, I just don't want. I don't want another one. Unless Shia LaBeouf's the lead, unless he's Stop. Harrison Ford. <laughs> Indiana Jones was to me, um, as a child, in in a teenager, like the MCU's now. Okay, whatever. Star Wars is was was kind of as a child, but the, but the other thing there for me was indie. And, you know, those movies are, they made, they made wanting to be a treasure hunter or an archaeologist cool. Everybody thinks about archaeologists or history guys as these, you know, stuffy old dudes in their, in their, their tweed jackets and their, their suits and their bow ties. But Indiana Jones was a badass. And <clears throat> without Indiana Jones, we probably don't get Uncharted as a game series, which is one of my favorite game series, possibly, probably my favorite game series, honestly. Um, but there's just something cool about going around the world and solving puzzles and, and, you know, fighting Nazis and all this. And, and the, the first three are sacred to me. Um, Raiders, totally Raiders agree. temple and, um, the last crusade, which just as an aside, did you know the temple is actually a prequel to Raiders of the lost Ark? I'm this many days there old. You go. So those three. And I remember, I, I don't remember if you were there, but we saw um, the Legend of the Crystal Skull with friends, um, our good friend Ty, and I walked out of the theater and we looked at each other and were just like, "What the hell was that?" We we all went. Okay, I couldn't remember if you were and, if you were in on that or not. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember it. Um, Ty and I looked at each other and we were like, "What the hell was that?" It it was just complete. There's an alien ship. There's there's Shia LaBeouf that's straddling jeeps. There's Mister French from The Departed. It just was, it was a, it was just a, an amalgamation of, of awfulness. So my thing is, <clears throat> would I like to see another indie? If it's done correctly, yes. But I don't think it's going to be done correctly because it's the same thing as the Star Wars thing that we talked about last week. Now everything, you, you force that campy, over the top, awful comic relief into things and it makes things bad. There's funny parts in the original indie trilogy. They're meant to be funny. He's like his sarcasm, no ticket, when he throws the guy off the Zeppelin in um in uh, Last Crusade. That's like kind of funny, but it's not funny. You know what I mean? And when they shoehorn those those like forced funny moments in, it just doesn't work. And so I'd love to see them do another indie if they do it the right way, but I don't think they're going to. Ian Harrison Ford's like literally at this point like eighty years old. Maybe not eighty. I, I'm pretty sure he's in his seventies though. So how he's are you doing this? I don't. I didn't. I hated Shia LaBeouf's character in um, Legend of the Crystal Soul. I'd like to pretend that that's not a thing. I'd like to pretend that whole movie's not a thing, and just erase it from the canon and 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 start it over. Um, the young indie series, if you remember that, I think it was on for a couple seasons when we were kids. Those were solid. That's. I feel like the direction they should go in. Um, who they get for something like that rather than do um, you know something with 90 year old indie uh, that might be more exciting just re- just kind of reboot the series um, we're gonna get an uncharted movie from from um, Sony Pictures which is going to be really similar and Tom Holland's gonna be in it I think it's gonna be garbage um, but that might be the closest thing we get to, to indie being done the right way 
You know who I would love to see? If we're going to just reboot the series, we just go a different direction. Because I think he does kind of the same Harrison Ford. Like, he can be funny without being funny. Ryan Gosling. Give him a fresh start on something. He's buff, but, he, you know, he's handsome. He's kind of not, he's not on the radar anymore with a lot of people. You bring him back in there, you know, he's got the looks, he's got the charm. He can be funny without being funny. You know, you don't have to talk a lot when you're indie. And that's a good thing with Ryan Gosling, you know. I, I think that'd be fun. I mean, he's one of my just, like, favorites just because of certain movies I just enjoyed over the, the years. But I think that would be... The Notebook. Huh? Oh, the, the, yeah, number one Notebook. Drive. Um, I like movies like, you know, I think that would be interesting. I, I think if he's willing to do something like that, because he's not doing anything. Nobody's doing anything right now. But you give him a little series. Give him a little something, a little chew on. You know, he, he would chew all over a scene well, like now that. That's, and now that's my other thought is since, you know, Indy was a Lucas, or a, um, yeah, Indy was a Lucas thing. It would have gone over to yeah. Disney in the yeah. sale. Maybe try a young indie series on on Disney Plus and run. It that would like be that. cool. I would, I would, I would prefer that over doing the movies. Um, just give me a young indie series. Do the Marvel, you know, do the Marvel thing. Give us a series because that'd probably be fun. And I feel like you go a lot more. You go so many more directions that way. Yeah, I, I would be more in favor of that. If you're gonna do a movie, someone in their late thirties, early forties might be a fun way to go because at least you get you know ten years of someone that's not gonna be like. Really, really. I'm trying old. to think. Like the name that keeps popping up to me is Russell Crowe. Um, I think he's got the look. I mean, that would be fun because he. I mean, he, they were. You know, that's a connection to Ryan Gosling right there. So the nice guys, great movie. If you've never seen it, Pizza Hut mascot Chuck E. Cheese jumping from film to television. A, I thought Chuck E. Cheese was bankrupt, and B, this is horrifying. I don't have to eat the pizza, do I? That's what I'm concerned yes. about. They're not going to make me eat. The, that's going to be part of my pizza it's, reviews. Yeah, you can follow my pizza reviews, too, if you want, people. Please do that. Rate review. Um, yeah, I, Chuck E. Cheese. It's I, I, There's one near, sort of near where I live. It's, still it's horrifying to me. I thought they went bankrupt. Yeah. Look it up. I thought they went bankrupt, too. Um, I mean, maybe it's I'm not like I'm traveling much. I literally work. I eat food. And I come here and do these podcasts. Um, yeah, no, I, I I hope it's not in business anymore. It seems like a cesspool of bacteria. Well, they Who's got to say of, COVID um, didn't start there. They don't have the um, the the ball no pit ball anymore. pits. I yeah, have. They got rid of the ball pit. The ball pit, so gross. Um, oh yeah, my god! It filed I Chapter just... Eleven bankruptcy in June, so I don't know how this is. Th- I mean, Chapter Eleven is that the one you don't have to pay back? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I think you don't have to pay. You just kind of have to. I don't know. It, they'll be back. Well, They'll I think be they're back. even bringing Toys R Us back. Um, I, I forget what they're going to call it, like Jeffrey's Toy Barn or something like that. Speaking of toys, mm. Marvel Legends Toy Line set to, re- to release retro-inspired action figures. Um, mm. These things look look pretty cool. They look kind of old school, uh, like the action figures that we would have played with when, when we were kids. What was your uh, action figure of choice when you were a child? This is one of the easiest questions. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, not even... Not even close. I've kicked around the idea of so many of them. The thing earlier, I've kicked around the I- the idea of, of starting to try to track some of those old ones down to, to let my son play with. Yeah, incredible, incredible. So you just pop the legs right off. Yeah, you, you have the ones that you could have like the little turtle, and they turn into yeah, the Ninja turtles too. Mm-hmm. That was fun. I had the Technodrome. I had that. I had the whole. I had the Technodrome in the van. Yeah, too for the place. I had the van. I had the I had the uh, tank that sh- shot the pizzas nice. out. That was incredible. Yeah, I had so much fun. Wild imagination, only child. <laughs> James Cameron reports Avatar 2 is complete and Avatar 3 is 95% complete. According to IGN, Avatar was the top grossing movie of all time until surpassed by Avengers Endgame. Here's my question. Who wants these things? No I don't one. know why this You're, is a it's thing. It's literally the meme. Like five of these things. Who? Can, I mean, I know it's, that it's sold. It, it was the top whatever the reason why was because it was the first movie that actually utilized 3d um in a meaningful way that was that made it cool and the colors popped and but but the story was just dances with wolves all over again it was dances with wolves it was the last samurai it was any of those things that you wanted to do um in in that storyline i don't know anyone who wants avatars two through any number I would like someone to tell me that they want this. Yeah, if you're if because you want nobody wants right it. It's literally the meme. It. Yeah, yeah, it's literally the meme. No one, absolutely no one. James Cameron, 
Avatar four two through he's seven. He's drinking his own Kool Aid a little bit it, too much. Yeah, yeah. He he's irrelevant to me, by the way. Now I just want to point that out. He's not done anything. He's done Avatar. What, what, what's going on? He did Avatar. Exactly. But I mean, like that was a hundred years um, ago. He did Aquaman and Entourage. Hundred years ago. If you're familiar with that cinematic hundred years ago to me. Speaking of cinematic hundred years ago to me, I just like I just don't care about James Cameron. Speaking of cinematic universes, the MCU has bumped their movies again. Black Widow has been pushed back to May 2021. Originally slated to release May 7th, 2020. The Eternals and Shang Kai uh, have also been bumped and delayed again. I mean, this isn't any surprise. They're not going to kick these movies to, to Disney Plus. No. This is a uh, I'm glad that... Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that the Black Widow got pumped, uh, pushed back around my birthday. I like these Marvel movies coming around my birthday. A little Florence Pugh action on my birthday. That's fun for me. That means we get a lot of Florence Pugh you know, interviews, which I love. Um, yeah, I, there's nothing surprising about this. You want to be in theaters when you're yeah. big movies. Uh, yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to watch these on TV. The Last of Us Day, which was formerly known as Outbreak Day, and they changed the name due to the pandemic that we're currently going through, was celebrated. Uh, a fan fest celebrated worldwide on September 26th. Uh, this is, of course, deals with the, the the big PlayStation series, The Last of Us. Nothing of consequence was really announced. Some people thought the multiplayer or some story DLC was going to be announced, but uh, nothing was announced. Uh, Neil Druckmann, the president. Vice President of Naughty Dog and Creative Director of The Last of Us did say that the that the multiplayer would would be quote worth the wait. Uh, there is a PS4 theme to be had, as well as some uh, Tilu takes on some classic gifs, so you can check those out. Um, the Last of Us. I know I said peanut butter. Is classic that what it, is? It gifs or gifs? You tell me. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I just I like to always say peanut butter. Fair enough. The Last of Us is. Um, uh, I like I said, the Uncharted series is probably my favorite series. Um, coincidentally, these these are two series made by the same developer. Um, the Last of Us, the original Last of Us, the game, The Last of Us, is probably and and this is you know I just turned thirty six. I picked up controller at the age of four. I haven't missed a day since. Um, the Last of Us is probably my favorite game of all time. Uh, it's probably it's one of my favorite pieces of media of all time: books, television, movies, bar none. Um, you know, the story hits, the story hits a lot different whenever you have kids. Cause it's a, it's a father, father, daughter story. Um, it's getting a, it's getting an HBO series. So, so some people who are maybe not gamers will get to partake in this, um, particular world. Um, hopefully in a meaningful way as I have, cause it's had a lot of impact on me. They do celebrate this the day after my birthday every year. Uh, like I said, it used to be called outbreak day, um, fan art. <clears throat> announcements just sharing the good vibes that, that people have gotten from this game um, so there wasn't a whole lot but there are there are some there are some things um, I see here that it's Otter Appreciation Week how are you celebrating Greg well I went for a swim um, you're supposed to eat also 10 pounds of clams I didn't I do that uh, you don't I need seafood the shrimp and hibachi Oh, okay, I understand. Uh, yeah, but I went for a swim at least. Um, you know, otters are cute, and they should be appreciated. I appreciate them. I have a question. Uncharted or ice cream, if you had to give up one? If I had to give up one? Like, like yeah, yeah, if you had to give, give up, up one. ice cream, it would be a whole hell of a lot healthier for me, so I'll give up ice cream. <laughs> that's that's a probably a I, I, I certainly consume yeah. more of it. <laughs> Same. All right. Um, media consumption recommendations. What? Uh, what are you? What are you watching? Reading? Listening to? Still, uh, still doing the Malcolm, the Seinfeld, uh, Great British Bake Offs. Back. It's back. First episode. So good. They they did a whole thing where the the challenge was to create heads of their idols. It was incredible. Incredible stuff. I love Great British Bake Off. What's I know we're not on video, but I have the. It's oh, it's on okay. Netflix. You gotta watch it. You'd lo oh, you'd no, love no, it. No. It's British, Brenton. It's your no, heritage. Right. It's your heritage. Um, also consuming uh, 
my favorite cookbook of the year. I always wait. I always rate my favorite cookbook of the year. It's Old World Italian by Mimi Thorison. I made a cocktail the other day. I tagged her. She looked at it. <laughs> That's fair. It was great. Um, yeah, she. Uh, it's great if you like Italian food. If you like someone who's not necessarily – she's not Italian. If you like someone that wants to create something different – it's fun. I'm looking forward to going through those recipes. So that's that's what I'm consuming right now, other than wine. Um, I'm still playing Fall Guys. Um, I'm kind of in this weird sort of in between right now where there's nothing new coming out. How are their nipples? They're hidden, um, as it were. Oh, okay. Um, nothing really new is coming out. I I, I played through a couple short games um, in the past week. Um, Gone Home. Uh, which was, which is, it's old, it's very, it's, uh, it might even be a PS3 game. Um, it's quite a bit older. Um, and I played a game called Inside, um, which is kind of like a puzzle platformer. Um, it, it received some game of the year buzz a few years ago. I don't really think it's that great. Um, it's good, but it's not like game of the year good. Um, those were fun, but like I said, they're like two, three hours each. I think they were both PS Plus games at one point, so I didn't, it's not like I paid for them. Um, I'm just kind of waiting for PS5. I'm still playing the refresh Amazon every other 10 minutes game. Uh, that's probably actually the game I play the most uh, to try to see if I can lock down one of these. I did that for a little while too, and I just couldn't, I couldn't yeah. do it anymore. I mean, I'm just, it's, I'm just going to wait until it's out there and just easily. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of all you can do. I'm, um, you know, I watched, uh, watched a little bit of baseball tonight, uh, like literally a little bit. And then I got frustrated and turned it off. Um, you just watch the ESPN baseball tonight show and you didn't watch the games or anything? No, I watch I watch the Indians game, but I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> um, yeah, that was uh, I, Yeah, every uh, team I wanted to win lost, so uh, I'm fine. Fair. I mean something about pinstripes in October just triggers my PTSD from just Araldus Chapman in general. Um over the weekend, this last weekend, I watched for the third time Spider Man into the Spider Verse. If you have not seen this movie Go watch it. It's on Netflix. Do it now. It, it it's, well, finish the podcast, but then afterwards, please go watch it. It's great. It, it's just <laughs> there's parts. It, it's it's um it's fun. Well, here's the thing: was I was um I was finishing up putting putting my Lego set together that I got for my birthday, the Boba Fett ship. Um, because it's a big beefy set. It's like it's like um I think it's like eleven hundred pieces. It took me um it took me five nights, uh, about an hour and a half every night to put it, to put it together. And so I threw into the Spider Verse on because I'd been thinking about it, and, and another podcast that I listened to kind of did a retro review of it um, a couple weeks ago or whatever. But the thing about that movie is the soundtrack's so good that you don't really even have to be paying attention to it. And the music in it's so good; it's one of my favorite albums, not just soundtracks, but one of my favorite albums is just the last couple of years. Um, you know, everybody I think knows the Post Malone song "Sunflower." That's like the main song. I, I think it got nominated for for an Oscar, even. It did, um, yeah. But to me, the song towards the end of the movie, when Miles, the the main character of of this particular Spider Man movie, sort of figures out his powers, um, that plays in the movie. It's called "What's Up, Danger," uh, and it's by um, Black Caviar and Blackway. It is if that movie does, if that song doesn't get your get your blood pumping, then you're dead. So, you know, the, the soundtrack's great. Um, the animation's really cool. It looks very comic booky, um, the way they kind of animated it. Um, it's, it's, it's funny. Nick Cage uh, voices the voice of Spider-Man Noir, and he's like this hard-boiled black-and-white detective. His character's hilarious, like, for no reason. Like, it's just unnecessary how funny that character is. So, yeah, like I said, it's on Netflix. If you haven't watched it, you're really missing out, so make sure you go check out Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I think that's about it. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that, by the way. I, I've told people about that movie that don't care about comic books. They come back to me and like, I love that movie. Yeah, it's excellent. It's, it's, it's for it, kids, it's for adults, it's, it's, for, yeah. it's for everybody. Um, <clears throat> okay, so like we said, we're on, we're on pretty much everything now, um, two episodes in. Uh, we were pretty pleased with with the feedback that we got. Um, I think the main thing for us moving forward is we as we try to build an audience and try to build this out, you know, to maybe be something um, bigger than, than than what we thought it was, or, or more enjoyable than than what we thought it was. 
um, is just to be to make sure that every week on a consistent basis we deliver the goods. So we've come up with a schedule and, and we're gonna have we're gonna have a show every Friday. Um, it's gonna post on on services every Friday. Um, it's a two. It's so you have your weekends. What's that? You have your weekends. You have your weekends to listen to it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna you know like I said we're gonna make sure. Um, we have the goal here in the next couple of weeks, we're going to do some, some kind of quote unquote evergreen episodes, like on the side that we have in the tank in case one of us has to miss an episode where we do some lists and rankings and things like that. That will be fun. Um, but I had such a great time last week. Like this was all I thought about, like through the weekend, it was my birthday weekend. All I thought about was I can't wait till Tuesday night when we can record again. I know. Same. I, so I was, was, I had such a high. I had such yeah, a high. Too. I was telling, I was telling everyone. And people are probably like, shut up. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love it. I'm I, checking. I was is... checking. I'm like, man, we got this many downloads. We got this many downloads. Like, a, I, I almost, I probably refreshed that almost as much as I did that Amazon page. Um, <laughs> anyway, you can follow us on Twitter. Um, Greg is GT at GT Filson. I'm at Y2B. Instagram, Greg is at GT Fills. And I'm also at YTB. Uh, subscribe, leave us kind reviews, share, recommend, share, 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 share. Tell two people that you know about this podcast and hopefully one of them listens to it, to us. And especially, and I can't say this, I can't say this enough. Tell your mother, tell your parents, but mostly tell your mother about tell your the mom. unmistakable essence that is the BX, the BXG podcast. Tell your moms. That's what it's all about. Tell your moms. Tell your mom you love her. Give her a call. Tell her you love her. Tell her you're happy that you raised that she raised you right. Yeah, she exactly. probably doesn't hear that enough. But tell your mom. No, exactly. You got two. You got two kids right here raised by great moms. Hundred percent. Yep. Can't All wait right, till man. next week. Can't wait till next week. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.